it's always fun uh, doing questions from subscribers because I love how y'all are always thinking outside the box. Y'all come up with all these different uh, topics and questions and, and issues and solutions too. Uh, and I appreciate it. Um, one of the biggest, uh, most recent questions and topics has been the fourth down call by the Ravens, of course. Now, we're not even here to talk about whether it was the right or the wrong call, but more so to dive into the way that that play was set up. What was set up good about it? What was set up bad about it? What could have been worse, but what could have also been better? But to help me answer that question and more, I brought on a very special guest. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, uh, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs, but for this episode I had to bring on uh, my guy KO, Kevin Ostriker from Locked On Ravens. Um, before we get into it, let everybody know uh, who you are, well I kind of let them know that already, but let them know where they can find you at uh, and exactly what it is that you do. Yeah, I'm excited to be here, I appreciate you having me on, I am the host and Produced over at Locked On Ravens, we do a five-day-a-week podcast there on the Ravens. So Monday through Friday, we got you covered with, you know, game news, analysis, anything you think about. We're on YouTube and video form. We also have it in audio form. I also am the managing editor over at Ravens Wire. So seven days a week, we have some Ravens content over there. And also, we have a lot of different stuff in terms of just Ravens. Twitter, I'm at KaleSugar34. And overall, yeah, it's a bunch of Ravens for me. Okay. All right. Appreciate it. So, uh, and for anybody who is too lazy to do a search, all of the stuff will be down below uh, in the description. Um, the podcast link, the YouTube link, link to his Twitter, all that good stuff will be right in the description of this video. So without further ado, we got some plenty of good questions as always. So let's get into this fourth down call. First question came from my guy, Kevin S. And he said, the fourth down call. And Graven, I'm not upset about the fourth down call. I'm upset with the play call. Roll them all to the right or to the left. Give him a run pass option. Bootleg left or right. I just don't understand continuing to keep Lamar in the pocket on crucial plays. Shaking my head. And see that initially, I, I thought, I, with, again, live while the game was going on, I was 50-50 on it. I was, I was okay that they went for it. I would have been okay with them to take the points. Um, and I actually thought that the, the play design, it was actually set up nice um, because it was designed to get Duve open. I think um, maybe Lamar, uh, he, he got flustered a bit because the pocket wasn't the greatest uh, and he started backpedaling. Um, and that's that's usually not a good thing, uh, even though we have seen times where Lamar has still made it happen. Um, and the throw, it wasn't a bad throw. Like if Duve, uh, he just would have had to th have thrown it earlier. But anyway, um as far as the play design, initially I was thinking, all right, this 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 was a nice play design. It was set up. We even talked about it in a couple of videos too. Um, but there were some people who made some really really good points. Um, and my guy Kevin, he just brought up one too. And I know a lot of people were talking about how there wasn't uh, it wasn't a, a option to run because there was no running back back there. It was just an empty set. So just simply having a running back back there, um, that could have added a, a, a quick threat. Uh, to really throw the defense off just a bit um, and just really give Lamar some added possible protection um, or another option. But what, what do you think about the actual, um, both the play call and, and the play design all in one? Yeah, the, the call to go for it on fourth down, I, I would have kicked the field goal personally. You know, I understand the reasons why people would want to go for it. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think with, with the play design in general, I, I go back to the Pittsburgh game last year where they go for two and Lamar has Mark Andrews open, but he has to step up in the pocket because mm -hmm. there's pressure in his face from TJ Watt immediately. And so, yeah, maybe having an, ad, an added running back would have added that extra protection if he's in there to block or something. But we've also seen the rollout plays before in those right. situations. And sometimes they they were ugly sometimes and they, they didn't really work. So, you know, he had Devin DuVernay in the back of the end zone. And that's something mm -hmm. that you, you go back and you look and you're like, 
they're so close to having it. They're so close to getting it done. But I think overall, you know, in that situation, I personally take the points. I get that. Yeah, you know what? If there's a little bit more better execution or if there's a little better execution, you, you get the six and you're able to score. But at the end of the day, I think you take the points. You trust your defense to protect the three-point lead instead of protect a seven-point lead. I think that still sends the same message to your defense of, hey, you know what? We're going to go out there. We're going to trust you with this lead. So I I don't know. I think the play design, it it was fine, I'd say. I mean, you do have a wide open player. That's what you scheme open. You you scheme open a guy Mm -hmm. to get open, and it it happens in the end zone. It's just a a split second of of non-protection where Jackson has to backpedal. Mm -hmm. He can't get the ball off. So at the end of the day, we're we're all looking at that, and we're saying, well, it doesn't matter because the ball is intercepted, and there's nothing you can really do about that. So I'm, I'm, I'm still team take the points but i do understand why you know that there are some people who just want lamar to be put in these best situations to be able to go out there and perform and look i mean lamar didn't have a great game against mm-hmm. the bills you know like he's that doesn't mean he's not a great quarterback doesn't mean he's not the mvp race or anything but at the same time i do think that there were a couple of plays he'd like to have back and i, I yeah. know this might be one of them because i know he's probably watching the film and seeing devin duvernay break open in that corner and saying mm-hmm. you know dang if, if i just let that ball go it would have been an easy score Next question came from my guy, Elix. He said, just want your opinion. Good morning, Engraven has a family. Uh, I just got a couple of questions on things that are major. First question, in your personal opinion right now, do you think the Ravens should fire John Harbaugh? Why or why not? I don't want to start thinking that coaching is going to be a problem for each and every game. Um, I, second question, I see so many people are saying the Ravens should hire Sean Payton as a new head coach. What's your take on that? I know wide receivers would be phenomenal and our play calling on offense would be amazing. And that's just saying a lot about one side of the ball. So a two part question. Um, Should the Ravens fire Harbaugh and would Sean Payton be a good replacement if they were to do so? I'll let you start with this one and I'll finish it up. You know, in terms of the Harbaugh question, I think right now it's just too early. I mean, we're, we're a month into the season. I know there's a lot of disappointment in terms of the Ravens being two and two right now. Now, I mean, two and two in, in hindsight is not a terrible place to be right now, especially right. with, you know, the North doesn't look amazing right now. And th- there's some there's some oh, there's openness in this AFC right now to be able to go and still in mm-hmm. December be talking about a high seed. But for now, I think that the Ravens, they wouldn't benefit a ton from firing John Harbaugh. They have to go out and find a replacement super early in the season. Harbaugh would get scooped up pretty quickly, I think, too. So uh, for now, look, the decisions that Harbaugh has made in some of these circumstances, yeah, you know, there have been some controversial ones. But I I think that we're too early in the year to have a conversation of, oh, you know, the Ravens have to clean house. They have to clean the coaching mm-hmm. staff. There have to be improvements, absolutely. Like right. there, there have to be areas where John Harbaugh improves, and all the other, you know, Greg Roman, Mike McDonald, etc. Mm-hmm. But there are still a lot of moving pieces. This team has gone through an, another injury situation, well, multiple this year, and they're trying to work new pieces in there, trying to get the rookies up to speed. They're relying on rookie contributions, big ones from guys like Kyle Hamilton and Daniel Falele and, and others. So yeah, I, I think that. Two and two isn't a terrible place to be, but it's disappointing because of how they got there. And I think that's uh, where yeah. the frustration is mm-hmm. because they have they had the option to be a four and team right now, mm-hmm. to be a three and one team right now. And they're not. Mm-hmm. They're sitting at two and two, which is, you know, it's 500. It's OK, but it's not great. It's not the undefeated top of the AFC that I think, look, in the two losses, I think the stat is they've trailed for 14 seconds yeah. and they've lost both those games. So it's it's the execution there. Ooh. So for Harbaugh in particular, you know, look, if this is a if this is a four win team in, in January, yeah, maybe that conversation happens. But <laughs> I, I don't think we're going to get there, first of all. And I think that this team has too much talent to continue to go, you know, and, and do all this. Now they have to execute. But in terms of Sean Payton, I think, yeah, if, if the Ravens want to go the experienced coach route, you know, that they could go with a Sean Payton. He's someone mm-hmm. who obviously had plenty of success over there in New Orleans and right. is a very smart football mind. I think that would definitely be mm-hmm. an option for them. Now, it depends which way they want to go. If they want to go with that experienced option, I think Peyton would definitely be towards the top of their list. But, mm-hmm. you know, if, if they wanted to go, the, the, the last time the Ravens hired a head coach, they they zagged while everybody else was going one way. They went the other way and they hired, mm-hmm. hired a special teams coordinator and John Harbaugh. 
and everybody's thinking, well, well the special teams coordinator, you know, yeah. I remember Jason Garrett was Garrett. in that conversation. They had a lot of, they had a lot of names, you know, the bright offensive mind, Jason Garrett and Harbaugh was the one who was the better hire by a landslide. So maybe they could go with that young offensive, innovative coordinator. But if, if they did want to say, Hey, you know what? We have a window. We want an experienced coach and we have confidence in a guy like that. Then yeah, I think maybe Sean Payton could be an option, but who, who knows at this point? Cause again, I, I just don't see them firing Harbaugh right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know um, Harbaugh definitely isn't going anywhere uh, during the season. And um, I, I do uh, – I appreciate the conversation uh, about it, should the Ravens make that move. But at the same time, um, let's see what happens. And I know that the, the thing that's been frustrating, I know, with Ravens fans is just um, when Harbaugh uh, becomes a repeat offender. Uh, when we see a lot of the same issues that we've been seeing uh, for a long time. Um, and I know that, like like you mentioned, with the losses, um, Ravens, they they score a couple more points. They take a couple more field goals. Um, they do a couple more things a little better, um, especially that the second-half offenses, because uh, the second-half offenses all year have just – they've dragged. Um, but then there's been some decision-making that's been questionable, too. It's just been a, a good mix of a little bit of everything. Um, then of course can't forget about the defense as well. But if they uh if a couple of things are better than they, yeah, they are sitting at four and zero right now. Um, but we know that the Ravens they don't make these in season. They would they would not make an in season coaching fire as far as a uh, head coach. Uh, we of course remember the whole offensive coordinator thing that they did. Uh, they did it with um Cam Cameron. Then they did it with uh was it Mark Tressman? I think it was Mark Tressman during the season he got fired too. Um. But so with Harbaugh, we know he's not going anywhere. Um, but if something were to happen with Harbaugh, uh, I, I think one of the reasons a lot of Ravens fans, uh, and including myself, uh, would be enamored with uh, Sean Payton is because we would just love to see, especially since they have a Lamar Jackson, uh, we would love to see him maximize. We just feel like that he would do a much better job of really maximizing Lamar Jackson. Uh, as a quarterback, um, we saw what he did with I mean, obviously Drew Brees. He did his thing, and Drew Brees was doing his thing before uh, he got to New Orleans. But he got to New Orleans and just continued, and then did had some great seasons. Um, but we saw what he did with him. But we saw what he did with Jameis Winston for a year. We saw what he did with Teddy Bridgewater, um, and even a little bit with with Taysom Hill too. So for to see what he did with those guys, it's like oh man, imagine him with a Lamar Jackson. Oof. That, 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 that would be something serious right there. And I just feel like um, he would really be able, to, not even just to get the most out of Ravens, uh, out of quarter, Raven quarterback Lamar Jackson, but really get the most out of Ravens offense as a whole. Um, but will it happen? I doubt it. Uh, but you never know. We won't know till we know. Um, but back to, to Harbaugh, uh, he has time. He, he got a long leash with the Ravens. Um, and even like, Say this season doesn't go uh, as a lot of people hope it goes. Um, Harbaugh just he he is in such a safe place right now. Um, I don't even think that like obviously right now the Ravens are obviously not thinking about firing Harbaugh. But if it it even if stuff went just terrible this year, like I feel like if, if for them to even think about the conversation, um, things would have to just it would have to collapse. Like you mentioned, uh, it, if they were a four win team in January. <laughs> Like there's no way that they get there, right? But if they were a four win team in January, um, so that would be what four and thirteen. Then there's a conversation. It would definitely be, I think, more than a conversation at that point. But um, I just don't see them getting there, uh, and I just I don't see many scenarios where uh, Harbaugh uh, is going. Next question came from Terry. He said, time to make even more adjustments. What's up, Ingrid? Hope you and the family are doing great. And nothing but blessings coming your way. I wanted to ask you two questions. One. Did you know that the Chiefs have made four AFC Championship appearances for four straight years, 2018, 19, 20, and 21? Should the Ravens take a page out of their book of success, knowing they had two Super Bowl appearances and one Super Bowl win? Um, so let's start with that first, because he has another question as well. Um, now, when you say take a page out of their book, um, they've just they've done a phenomenal job. Uh, and and the, the the topic of your question is adjustments. Um, the Chiefs have done a good job of making adjustments. They've had a lot of success 
uh, over those four years. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes, um, one of the best quarterbacks in the game right now. And some can argue he is uh, the best quarterback in the game right now. Um, the way that they just really uh, – they 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 just have such a talented offense um and they will do their best to really run up that score um if they can uh just in the defense the defense is never usually locked down but they are just very uh opportunistic um usually chiefs there are some games where chiefs offense doesn't make it as easy but usually chiefs offense they make it easier uh for their defense to where the chiefs offense is scoring all these points and then they can make teams a lot more one dimensional um, so they just start passing and start trying to play catch up. And it's just it ends up being too little too late uh, for a lot of teams. Um, so Chiefs, they they really put a lot of pressure on you um, as a team when it comes to scoring points. But as far as the Ravens, um, for them to really take a page out of the Chiefs playbook, I mean, Ravens just got to finish. That That's the biggest thing with them. They just they, they got to finish. Um, Raven, again, we, we talked about it uh, in this video about this season. Uh, they could be sitting at 4-0 if they really just continued applying that pressure, uh, really just continue scoring points. The defense played a little better. Uh, Lamar had some better games. Uh, the receivers, they, they stepped up a little bit more. There were less drops by the offense. Uh, there were a couple more, a couple better calls and whatnot. Like, there's, it's just some, there's some little fixes that the Ravens can do to have uh, big improvements. Uh, but, K.O., what would you say as far as um, – the Ravens may be taking something from the Chiefs when you look at all the success that they've had over the past uh, four years, making all those AFC championships. Yeah, I think it's funny because you have the Chiefs actually taking from the Ravens with Orlando Brown and having having that whole situation happen. But I, I think when you're talking about the Chiefs, you know, they have a very creative offense, very unique, and so does Baltimore. So don't get me wrong, but you know, Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy, that that offense, mm -hmm. and obviously having a guy like Patrick Mahomes, and you say, mm -hmm. well, the Ravens have Lamar Jackson, and I say, you are correct, absolutely, they do, and you know, the ability for them to be able to maximize Lamar Jackson, especially while he's still on this this contract, which I know the fifth year option forms around twenty three million, but yeah. he's gonna get he's gonna get a deal. He's gonna get a big one, and he's gonna deserve every penny of it. And so, what the Chiefs have done a really good job at is being able to maximize their cap space and their cap room. They were mm. able to sign Mahomes to that big, massive deal. They brought Chris Jones back. They have Travis Kelsey on that deal. Now we're starting to see a little bit of that crack with. Tyreek Hill having to get traded just because, you know, he, he wanted that big contract and my, and Miami gave it to him. He, he has a huge deal in Miami right now, mm -hmm. but part of it is being able to do that. And I think the Ravens do a good job at that and they have to continue because this is something the Ravens haven't really dealt with before in terms of a contract of this magnitude. And I know, you know, the, the Ravens and Jackson have tabled those talks. I'm not going to get too, too, too far deep that rabbit in that rabbit hole. But I think that, the Ravens, in terms of what they can take from the Chiefs, I mean, the, the Chiefs, you're right, are a team that can they can suffocate you, which is how good that offense is, how quickly they can put up points, and they, they mm -hmm. do it a different way. You know, the Ravens, yeah. when, when the Ravens are at full strength and they are doing what they want to do, they are running the football effectively with the passing game in there. Now, the Ravens are a passing team this year. The pass right. offense has carried this offense. Lamar Jackson looks mm -hmm. really, really, really good as a passer, as he has in the past. It's not just a this-year thing. Right. But I think for the Ravens, they do want to be that, that that balanced offense that can just you know put up 150, 200 on the ground with that duo of J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. I think that a lot of people want to see that, but also the added element that we have seen Lamar Jackson grow so much as a player over the course of his four plus years in the NFL. I think in terms mm -hmm. of taking someone from Kansas City, it'd be hard to kind of just rip a page out of their playbook and just kind of shove it in there and be like, all right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to only run this one page in that offense. But yeah, I know adjustments do have to be made. You know, this is a team mm -hmm. that has to improve. You mentioned the finishing. This does this goes back to last year when they lost right. all those one score games. They were blowing these in the fourth mm -hmm. quarter. So mm -hmm. they just have to be better. And this is a team that is, I think, better than their 2-2 two and two record, a team that should be 4-0. Oh. And again, I think that is what the frustration, that's where the frustration comes in because mm -hmm. you have a team that honestly probably should be at the top of the AFC North, at the top of the AFC. And instead, they're kind of in that muddy 2-2 two and two range with like 10 other teams where I think they're a little better than that. So if the finishing continues to be an issue, then that is an issue. But I think that they can get better at it, and I, I hope they can because they're going to have to. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, and the second part of his question, he said, do you think the Ravens should sign or trade for another middle linebacker? Not to bash Queen. He's good and the potential is there, but the lack of consistency is being a major issue and could use an old friend such as LJ Fort. Wish nothing but the best and team keep it clean. Trust. So should the Ravens bring back LJ Fort? You know, I was um I was actually surprised that they didn't. Um, I'm not sure what his status is right now. I know he suffered, what was it, a, a torn ACL or was it Achilles in that second preseason game last year? I forgot what it was. Um, yeah, the ACL, I think. Oh, it was ACL, okay. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure what the status of LJ40 is right now. Um, they, of course, brought back Bynes. They tried uh, to sign Bobby Wagner. Um, so that they tried to upgrade the linebacker group, but... Yeah, it's it's been it's been up and down. Uh, for Patrick Queen specifically, yeah, just closing like that has been a big issue with him. Has just been finishing those big plays um, consistently. Uh, so, as far as the trade, I don't have any names that come off the top of my head. I know a lot of people have talked about Roquan Smith, um, but I, I don't see Bears getting rid of him uh and i don't see the ravens trading for him um at least not during the season uh, the off season uh maybe possibly but no not not during the season um i, I think as far as the the in, at inside linebacker one of the things that the ravens could do uh just do some personnel switches uh maybe have chuck uh just be in the box a lot more uh, but chuck he's missed his fair share of tackles too so I don't know. You know what? I'm, I'm I'm honestly just lost on that. What they should do at the inside linebacker situation right now, because uh, again, Patrick Queen he has not been all bad, um, but it's just those plays, those the, the missed opportunities uh, that have stuck out the most. Uh, but what would you say about it? Yeah, I I think trading for one. If if I had a choice of if the Ravens made a trade, where would I trade? What position? I'd probably go more outside linebacker, or wide receiver mm -hmm. at, at this point. So in terms of Roquan Smith, yeah, look, I, I, I've, I've loved Roquan Smith since his Georgia days. Like as someone I, I thought the Ravens could have really benefited from drafting. And obviously the Bears take him far before the Ravens can even sniff him in the, in the draft. But look, he, he's a great player, I think. But part of the deal here is he wants a huge contract and the Ravens are <laughs> dealing with another huge contract in, in, <laughs> in, in Lamar Jackson. So again, it's, it's where do you allocate those resources if you're the Ravens? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be opposed to bringing back somebody like an LJ Ford or bringing in a, a veteran linebacker who's in the, on the fridge market i thought quan alexander would have been great for him he, he's oh, yeah. balling out with the jets this year so that that's maybe something they, they could have done maybe there are other options out there for him but i think if, if you have a word that you want to associate with this ravens team and you want them to get better i think consistency is put a plaque up there for her you know patrick queen consistency pass rush consistency run game consi it's all the consistency Ooh. stuff finishing consistency and i think yeah for Ooh. queen it's a lot of just what you want to see from a first round pick now in his third season you know you you don't want to be having these conversations about you know he was great in this aspect but at the same time there was this and that and the other and i agree like i don't think patrick queen has been all bad this year i think he has right. shown a ton of flashes there has been potential but that has been mm -hmm. kind of the story for patrick queen where we have seen the the very high highs and the very low lows and, and mm -hmm. that's kind of what it's been for him I don't yeah. think there have been as many lows for him as some people think, but there have been some this year. But I also think that he has done some very good things. He's mm -hmm. he's he's looked more confident this year, I think. And I think it's just a matter of getting things down overall. In terms of what they can do with the position, part of the shock for me, they kept like six outside linebackers, five outside or inside linebackers this year. I only expected him to keep three or four because of the safety depth and what they can do with guys like Chuck Clark and Kyle Hamilton in the box. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think you're necessarily pigeonholed if you're the Ravens into keeping two middle linebackers on the field on third down because you have a guy who can play in the box, play that dime, dime linebacker look. And so if Patrick Queen is struggling one game in pass coverage, you know, you don't have to be afraid to take him out on third down and maybe have Josh Bynes as your one middle linebacker and then, have Chuck Clark in the box or Kyle Hamels in the box. Those three safety looks, I think, can be so deadly for them. Mm -hmm. And I know as the year goes, look, Kyle Hamilton's a rookie right now, and I get that. They're trying to work him in. They're trying to get him acclimated to the game. So maybe come November, December, we'll see that a lot more where, yeah, they only use one inside linebacker on the field on third down. They use three safeties, six DBs or whatnot. 
But part of the reason I love their safety depth so much in the offseason was because I thought it allowed them to be much more versatile in what they did as a defense. And they've, they've showed versatile looks, don't get me wrong. But I, I think they aren't, again, pigeonholed into keeping, you know, 10 minute linebackers on the field at the same time. They, they can take them off and they don't have to use them because this defense is not a traditional one. And I think that's a good thing. But th- they have the talent there where they don't have to necessarily rely on Patrick Queen to be 100% of the snaps type player. Now, I know they've, they've been doing that a little bit with him, and I, th- I think he's done fine. But I, a little more consistency, I think a lot of people would like to see. All right, next question uh, came from my guy, Kim Patchy. Uh, he said, Duve is to Jacoby as Bateman is to Bolden. Uh, after hearing the Duve and Jacoby comparison, uh, which we did, uh, on an episode of question from subs a few days ago, because somebody um they they asked the question, did does Devin Duvernay uh remind us of Jacoby Jones? Uh and initially I was thinking like no, their their play style, they're two completely different players, uh their styles are not the same. Uh, but then I thought more, oh wait a minute, is it because of the the, the big playability? Um the when they whenever they had a ball in their hands, good stuff usually happens and, and big stuff. Um, so in that, in that sense, I could see why he could remind people of Jacoby Jones. But anyway, um, he said, I got curious and I did a bit of comparing myself. Uh, and it turns out Rashad Bateman is on pace to have a better season than Anquan Bolden did in the Ravens Super Bowl season. I understand it's too early in the season to get my hopes up. It's not even the bye week yet, but the more I look at this Ravens roster, the more they look like a Super Bowl team. I'd like to know your thoughts. I hope you all are safe and well. Peace. Now, disclaimer. He sent this question on October 1st. So it was before the uh, the Ravens and Bills game. Now, um, as far as the pace that Rashad Bateman is on, uh, hopefully um, he can continue to add to his pace uh, and hopefully he'll be healthy. Because uh, again, remember him, he was in the walking boot, but ho- hopefully that was just extra, the Ravens being extra cautious. Um, but as far as the Ravens looking like a Super Bowl team, um, right now, I would say no, but it's not impossible for them to get there, uh, to looking like a Super Bowl team. Um, I, I think like, uh, my guy KO mentioned uh, a couple of questions ago, it's about, uh, consistency. It's about building up that consistency on every single level, uh, that you possibly can. Um, because if they can build up consistency in finishing games and be like, okay, if they can build up consistency, uh, and making those big plays uh, on both offense and defense, build up consistency with no drops. Lamar build up consistency uh, again with the offense in the second half of games. Just everything if the defense would play better or more consistent because they they did a great job against Josh Allen. So hopefully that carries on to the next game against Joe Burrow and everybody else after that too. Um, but if they can start to build up consistency, then they may be able to look like a Super Bowl team, but that's that's where everything starts. Um, so after these first four games, I can't say they look like a Super Bowl team right now because they don't. They don't. Um, but it's not impossible for them to get there. Uh, how would you say they look? Uh, how, how close or how far away would you say they look from being a Super Bowl team? I, I definitely think they're closer than far, more far away. But mm-hmm. I think, you know, they're a good team, but Super Bowl teams, you know, don't blow those leads. They're able to finish. So they have they have they have to get there. They they have to get there because you know in the playoffs, if, if you blow a 21 point lead and you lose, you're out. That's, That's it. it. You're mm-hmm. you're done. Mm-hmm. And, and that I think would be much, much, much more disappointing than having it happen in week two in a September game. You know, conference right. records important, right? The Ravens have lost two games where come December, come January, we're talking about maybe tiebreakers, you know, for division, for wild mm-hmm. card, et cetera those losses could loom large. So you have to take that into account. So I think, again, I, I, I agree with the consistency part of things. And part of it also, I think, again, it's just being able to mesh all these pieces together. Mike McDonald's mm-hmm. still finding his way as a defensive coordinator. And usually, right. you know, when, when you're hiring a new defensive coordinator, sometimes it does happen on contending teams. This is not the first time that a defensive coordinator change has happened with a contending team. But Usually it's happening on a team that is either going through a rebuild, has revamped their entire coaching staff. But this is a team that went from Don Martindale to Mike McDonald after, you know, a disappointing eight and nine season last year. But they they have been on the cusp of that, you know, AFC championship and, you know, playoff wins here and there. But they just haven't been consistent in the playoffs either. So they wanted to undergo a change. 
And so, yeah, I think that when you're looking at a guy like Mike McDonald, how he's able to adjust, he had a great year at Michigan last year, but the NFL is vastly different from college. And I think we're kind of seeing some of those growing pains a little bit like the end of first half defense over the past couple of weeks has not been amazing. I mean, the, the Ravens what, rushed like no people on one play against the Patriots and there was still a completion. So it's again, trying to figure out stuff like that, where in November or December, mm-hmm. Those things probably won't pop up as much, at least you would hope not, because he has experience under his belt that he didn't have in September or early in the season. And then it's the same thing with the players, you know, getting a guy like a Tyus Bowser back, a Ronnie Mm -hmm. Stanley back, Marcus Mm -hmm. Peters continuing to ramp up. Same thing with J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards as well. All these other players that can be seen as acquisitions. But again, they're not going to be the players we once saw right out of the jump. Well, maybe, maybe maybe some of them will be, and I hope that they will be. But realistically, you have to have that ramp up period of, hey, this is game action. This is what playing 100% of snaps looks like. This is what, you know, going through the course of an NFL game and NFL season is. Mm-hmm. I think Tyus Bowser solves a lot of their pass rushing issues, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, we're, we're wondering what's the status of Rashad Bateman. I don't what's what's the absence going to be there. I think Devin Duvernay can step up for sure. Duvernay Jacoby, I can see it based off big playability. Bateman Bolden is a little harder for me to see just because I think the play styles are a little different. Not saying that you know the, the stats or anything don't line up because Bateman. I think you're talking about big plays in that Super Bowl run. They had multiple receivers who could do that in terms of the mm-hmm. deep threat, like Torrey Smith and Jacoby yeah. Jones and all those guys. And Bolden was kind of your sure-handed, oh, yes, mm-hmm. throw to Bolden on third down and auto- right. automatic first, moving the chains, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they, they have big play guys this year in Bateman and Duvernay. And you're kind of looking for a, who's their Bolden. It might be Mark Andrews, who is, is that sure-handed third down guy and obviously their number one pass catcher. But, yeah, I think consistency is the big thing. I'll, I'll keep going back to it because I think it's the word they have to use because mm-hmm. they can be great for a half, right? They can be great in the first half right and if you don't do anything in the second half and you lose the game that first half doesn't matter anymore mm-hmm. just like the week two game against the dolphins lamar jackson has a great game and it's all washed away because they lose and they blow that 21 point lead no one mm-hmm. not no one because i do but not a lot of people remember how good of a game lamar jackson had because everybody talks about the 21 point blown lead and how mm-hmm. they didn't score and et cetera, et cetera. So they have to be able to do that a lot better. I think they can do it. I think this is just a matter of getting everybody gelled and meshed up, but they have to be able to do that or else it might be tough for them to go where they want to go. And I think that they can do it. I think that they can win a lot of games this year. I think they can be a very high seed in the playoffs and make a run, but right. it, they need to get their guys back. They have to get them to hundred percent and they have to be able to make sure that they're all on the same page heading into December and January and hopefully for them February. All right. And the last question on this episode came from my guy, coach white. He said personnel grouping, uh, top of the AM team. Keep it clean. Me being a coach. I noticed that thing. I noticed things that casual fans don't. <laughs> I'm hoping the Ravens, especially Giro see this video. When you talk about it, Buffalo is one of the few teams that have linebackers that are fast physical enough to match up with our 22 personnel in the run and pass game, which is rare. Usually I complain about the personnel grouping because it's outdated and to maximize any QB, not just Lamar, you need a lot of 11 personnel on the field. Not all the time, but more than what uh, we're using. Although be more users of 22 personnel like the 11 personnel, spreading out the tight ends and fullbacks, keeping teams off balance. A lot of teams will keep their linebackers in to stop the run, but when we spread them apart, uh, they're not quick enough to match up in most instances. Not Buffalo. Their linebackers could do both, causing our offense to become stagnant. It could have been the rain, weather slowing us down too. I don't know. Uh, if we're blessed, God willing enough to play them again, we have to be more balanced with our personnel by putting our eleven pack- putting in our 11 packages too. I know I said the same thing a few times about 22 personnel, but to understand my point, I had to. Uh, if possible, you don't have to – oh, <laughs> If possible, you don't have to read my question, but paraphrase it to your listeners. I'll appreciate it. Um, so it's now when you talk about the personnel, um, 11 personnel, 22 personnel, me, myself, I ain't no big X and those guys. But uh, what I think it comes down to is adjustments and, and that which everything that you said. It reminded me of adjustments. You talked about how the Bills, they had the linebackers that were able to adjust to everything that the Ravens did. Uh, and when the Ravens tried to sneak in something, the Ravens tried to, to, to uh, spread out the offense. Um, even in the 22 personnel that the Ravens, they just, they couldn't do it because the Bills were ready for it. Um, so that just, again, it, it takes me back. 
and again, this is with offensive play calling. This is with offensive execution. Um, this is with all of that. It just takes me back to the offense just not really adjusting in the second half this year because they have been just, in the word that you mentioned, stagnant. They've been stagnant. Um, and that is such a big issue that they got to get fixed. They got to get fixed. Like we remember last year, the Ravens offense, they would start off so many games slow. And we'd be like, man, why they starting off so slow? But then they start waking up a bit in the second half. But this year, they've been starting off games and starting off halves pretty good. And it's like, okay, hey, let's go Ravens. But then in the second half, it's like they go to sleep. So they um they they got to do a much better job uh, of adjusting because what they've been doing so far is is just not gonna cut it. Um, so that's on um, better play calling. Uh, from Greg Roman, that's on better execution from Lamar, better execution uh, from Bate and the receivers, Mark, and just everybody, the offensive line especially too. Um, it, it's up to the, the whole unit uh, to come together and just really put out better uh, effort in the second half because if they would be like this, like they've been all season, it's just not going to be enough. But how, how, What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think when you're talking about – 11 personnel, 22 personnel. I mean, yeah, you know, ha the fullback position, as it has been for the past couple of years, has been, you know, kind of phased out of a lot of NFL offenses. Mm -hmm. There aren't a lot of teams that use fullbacks, that use these heavy groupings anymore. There are still some that do it, don't get me wrong. But mm -hmm. this is part of the reason that I think a lot of people, they do want to see those in-game. And I agree. I think in-game adjustments are huge. I think sometimes the Ravens have been good at it, but I think – more often than you'd like to see they haven't done enough in the second half this year in order to warrant you know them saying oh this was great i mean the new england game I, kyle hamilton saved that game the nelson aguilar play was yeah. a play that would have gone for 30 40 50 yards if he had been able to get down with that football Ooh. the ravens are up by five at that point the patriots would have been deep in ravens territory and who knows i'm glad hamilton ended up doing what he yeah. did because it ended up mm -hmm. saving the game for him i think that was great but the, the whole league, or most of it at least, has zigged one direction. The Ravens zagged in a different direction with the way their personnel groupings go. And, you know, using these fullback sets, two tight ends, three tight end sets, you know, we're not in 2019 anymore. You know, Lamar Jackson has grown <laughs> plenty since then. I'm not saying never use them. I'm not saying never use them because this is like the identity of this team. But... Mm -hmm. What has been true is the fact that Baltimore's pass offense has been carrying them. They do have talent at receiver, and I mm -hmm. think you can use 11 personnel effectively if you want to use it more often if you're the Ravens. Now, what does Rashad Bateman and his situation do to this? You know, you're kind of having everybody move a rung up the ladder when if Bateman has to miss some time here. So Duvernay mm -hmm. becomes your one, and Demarcus Robinson becomes your two, et cetera, et cetera. So do you rely more on your 22 personnel in a, in a potential absence of Rashad Bateman. I think they would have done it even if Bateman was in there, but you know, I think people, they, they want to see more of these receivers on the field because they have the talent, not saying the tight ends don't because at the end of the day, you're putting the, they're putting the tight ends out there for multiple reasons. But I think a big reason and one of them is the fact that they can use the play action game with them effectively. And we're seeing some more under center plays this year from Lamar Jackson, but in 2019, what made this offense so good was the fact that their run offense was just, unbelievable and right. teams had to respect that they had to put players in the box mm -hmm. and when you see a 22 grouping out there with two tight ends and a, and a massive fullback and everything you have to put guys in the box and the ravens can run play action and teams have to bite on it a little bit because you if they're getting gashed for five yards to carry six yards for carry they can't just say we're gonna drop everybody and just hope that they're hope that they're throwing it this down they have to be able to get their run game back to what it was. Obviously, mm -hmm. I know the personnel, you know, you're hoping Gus Edwards comes back. J.K. Dobbins still working his way up. Ronnie Stanley has to be able to come back as well. Right. They don't have Marshall Yonda anymore. Orlando Brown's not in Baltimore anymore. Those are two mm -hmm. big losses. Mm -hmm. But they have to be able to do that. And I think if you're going to use 22 personnel effectively, play action is a huge part of what you do. 11 personnel, you can use play action off of that. But – I think we're seeing a lot more 11 personnel groupings throughout the league because these teams are going through receiver sets. They're getting three explosive. I mean, the Bengals, who they have on Sunday night with Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, you can use those those three in so many different ways effectively. So, yeah, yeah. I think you're, you're pointing, Raven, about them just being better at adjustments, I think is 100% true because I think that so much throughout a season – 
there are so many opportunities to go into that halftime locker room and say, hey, you know what? This is what is happening to us right now. Let's go out and do it. But sometimes it can be a, for- a fourth quarter thing where you have to adjust on the fly really quickly yes. because something is happening. You don't you don't mm-hmm. have the halftime locker room to go into mm-hmm. and something good is going on. You can't just say, all right, time out, guys. Let's go to let's go to the locker room. Let's figure it out. You have to do it right there <laughs> on the field. And I think we've seen them do a fine job at it sometimes. But I think we again, I- I'm going to say it one last time consistency is key when you're talking about this team and i think that's another area where it has to be good yeah this feels like a dream and you know just what i mean you see my boy he like gotta made it how to made it boy he's a fan and he like the ravens like the ravens and you know just what i mean you too team keep it clean you see my boy he like gotta made it how to made it Shout out to Graven.